Hey, welcome back to Cleflin Nights. This is the video log of the gaming that happened uh, on, on the week of 27 June 2017, episode 28. I guess it's a lot for some of these people. Um, a little darker in here. I didn't get the light turned on. I'm trying to get this done for the walk. Fear the Walking Dead is on later. So, hey, where did we last leave our heroes? Well, um, got the game a little bit of Cleflin this week, and uh, our good friends in Golden and Christopher Masters actually got to play a little bit of texting, and they woke up, um, like I explained to you last week, that um, they're in the theater at war, and uh, Chris Masters was actually possessing in gold. They split up, and they started talking to the local um, game director there, uh, and for the next bout that is about to happen, and they want to see if one of their reds could get in. So they, they gamble to let um, red queen play play and they didn't know that red queen is actually going to be up against uh nadira and nadira is an indian um beast master type type woman and she is uh, um taken on red queen ray uh, tells red queen hey you need to take these guys out let's check out fast we don't know what's going to happen but he, he goes top side to watch from the bystanders spectator level and um, Christopher Lord is down below um, where people enter the ring. Um, I say ring, it's, I don't want to say hexagon or octagon, but it's something like that size um, place. And um, so they're trying to watch with the other Reds uh, from down below. Ray, I mean, in Golden, spots above him uh, somebody trying to shoot with blow dart. And he water blasts with his eyes. This person, this person falls onto the field. And Red Queen uses this opportunity. Hey, something fell. And Nadira looks. And bam. Um, roundhouse and kicks Nadira out. So Red Queen wins. So it's at least two matches that the, the when they were awake. That the Reds got to play in. And... These guys got to make some money off of their red, their reds, playing in this bout. Um, and from there, we go to Black World. We last left our heroes at, uh, they were all breaking up to do some vacation sort of activities um, using the Luna device on the asteroid, calling it Asteroid. But I always call the thing an ass, a lunar device because most of the time they're on moons. And with that, uh, um, stars, the team stars gathered in the labs. Uh, the Forge guy from the Brotherhood and from and Peter Parker from Stars get together and say, "Hey, we can fix some things here. I can invent something for you, and you can help me learn this place." Um, so that's what they do. Uh, so what else? The rest of the stars team heads down to the gym area. Um, they kind of get an idea on um, when the knowing device explains their powers much better, so they they can understand what they can do. Uh, so imagine, um, you know, the rest of his team, stars, Kamala, Clarice, Mary. Uh, Wally, Sam, and Gwen all sitting around learning, oh, this is all the stuff I can do. I mean, I just got my powers last night. For most of the mutants, they had only gotten their powers less than 24 hours ago. Um, Gwen may have had it longer, but not really experiencing what to do with her powers. And, uh, let's see. So, and um, David from Argonauts and Mindy from Argonauts clan 
set up a shooting range and do some shooting, shooting at each other and stuff. Um, the um, Omega Dawn clan, uh, for the most part, uh, go up to the ops area at the Luna and Christopher Lord plays uh, from his memories Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, for Adrian Tomaz, who is Isis, uh, to be side by side, uh, Dr. Indiana Jones is pretty amazing. And now she's getting to... And yeah, he's really freaking ancient. He's probably like 116, seven years old. So he's really old and she's worked with him and now seeing him in action when he was young. That's pretty freaking cool. And uh, Charles and Monet from Argonauts hang out up there with them. Um, Bruce and Tessa take off to do their own thing. Alex, what did Alex and Hope do? They were uh, experiencing a bunch of their powers um, trying to do some practice that she didn't really want to do. Um, and from the Brotherhood, Joel Hastings is with um, Celine um, Galeo, Galio, and he's teaching her in the Fantasia device about modern times of Earth. There's so much to teach, but she's got to learn because he doesn't want her to be on the team. And then they get into 20th century, 21st century battles and. She's like, oh, I'm too busy looking at the pretty lights. Because she's come from Nova Roma life. This is not ancient Celine. This is 18-year-old Celine. So, so uh, that's Black World. And then we go to Clef Land with a D. And where we last left our heroes off there. Well, you guys remember that Last week, the rescue team is successful, successfully bringing back, and amazingly so, bringing back the uh, Mika Reese um, back to the land of the non-shadowed place. So the whole rescue team returns to Avatalos via the tabernacle. And all right, what do we do? Well, by the time they um, start heading towards the castle, I'm like, oh, castle's been life has been going on in the castle for the last hour and or hour or so that these guys have been in the underworld, um, rescuing. So I had a game that with the guys, and pretty much most of it, most of the gaming is centered around. Um, Centered around Marcus, I mean, the Marquis Christopher Prentice and uncle to him, Duke Frank Corso, and the dragon tattoo. Do the Marquis with the dragon tattoo? It's a new book coming out soon at the theater near you. But I'm not just joking, theater book different. Some people freak out that I make things, I say some wrong stuff. Like, oh my gosh, you said something you can't do. Anyways, so this happens. And the, um, what do, you, what do I want? Uh, talking with it, um, they had they had just come back from dropping off the rescue team and still at Avatalos. And they said, uh, they said, they send for uh, Dan to know the, the uh, local knowing to come to from the castle down here. So as they're waiting, basically, Dragon is um, calls himself Alex, but I'll just call him Dragon to be clear. That's not Alex the father. Um, the Dragon continues to screw with our Marquis uh, and tries to get him to do several 
idiotic things. And um, the whole time, Duke Frank is keeping the Marquis blind because he has this ability that he can see through anything and then teleport to it. And that's freaking... Well, it's yeah, it's really crazy. But if you know, he can see th he if he can see it, he can. It, it's really distance from between there and there zero, kind of like hyperspace or warp. But um, it goes really fast, so you got to keep him blind. And um, and Duke has this ability to turn. Usually, it was arranged when he was younger, uh, a ranged thing that he can only turn off, off or on everything within this this range. But after the deal. And after 20 some years, this 40 something year old Duke Frank Corso can, you know, pick and choose um, senses to turn off and on to expose people to. So he turns off his sight. And quickly, as the knowing is nearby, Dragon wants to ask certain questions like, Where's Wa Awazu? Wazu is um, a half brother, bastard half brother to the Marquis, and is also a supreme of which is a delicacy for the dragons, if you will. So Frank thinks quick, you know, uh, holds the tabernacle, which is time spot, and goes to another time spot that he knows, which is in the dungeon. Uh, Dungeons of Camelot is a time spot. And there's one particular room. And while he's down there, he's sensing through the different doors. There's four different doors in this room underground. He's hundreds of feet below Camelot. And, um, you know, sensing that there are other things there. But he knows now that the dragon can't dick with anything that's going on. He's like, oh, man. Uh, well, I'm just going to have to wait because I'm awesome. Now, it's a good thing he's not a Time Lord. Then he would be controlling his body to do other things. but So he's not. and um, Which may be a problem, as we see coming up. Anyways, this sort of thing of going from time spot to time spot is a difficulty that the Duke and the Marquis have to rein in the control that he has. So... Trying to get some help with this, the Duke teleports to another time spot, a person called Crow Ritz. Crow Ritz, as we, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month, was uh, last in the castle in Hastings. And he was with uh, Mara, Lord Jonathan Prentice, uh, Xander Lord, and who else? Oh yeah, and they were practicing, um, you know, a little bit of, um, you know, uh, melee against each other, and then the Duke and Marquis show up. They introduce each other because Frank, you know, a lot of these people don't know each other, but they've heard of each other. Frank says, "I need your help." Uh, blah blah blah. I need you to come down here to the, uh, you know, Dungeons of Camelot. Quickly, meet me down there. Boom, he goes back. Then the crow brings. The rest, um, his friends with him, and they're down there. Um, what does he try? I know uh, Duke has some ideas, and really nothing will work to control this guy. Um, he is really putting pressure on uh, um, the Marquis Christopher to use him to kill the dragon or I'm going to freaking chomp on people. And so in the end, this, um, they go back to Avatalos, takes off his sight and allows, uh, um, the Mar, the Marquis to find where that, it, um, that island, uh, um, Avalon is and go there. And he does quickly. Floki finding this out is uh, gets up into uh, who I think he was in Sean. Fly Sean, uh, the lightning ship Sean, out towards Avalon. And I wish I had the map of my land so I could point to them. But I can't. So they fly out towards Avalon, hundreds of miles to the north. 
And meanwhile, <laughs> up in Camelot, there, uh, the Baron has um, is sitting there at uh, Tassil Lay Place, and that's the main watering hole in. Uh, Camelot, I told you some of these last week. He, oh geez, I got six minutes, hurry. He, he's asking his knowing things. Well, showing up is Crow and uh, Xander telling him, hey, the Marquis is uh, going to attack Zul over there in Avalon, and we know there's going to be a massive destruction. You need to get to Avalon or save the people or do something. And then they take off um, using, um, they're using the Tower of Magister to teleport throughout the realms. Um, the, the Baron, who's there, Baron and Baroness, he calls his brother Andrew and says, hey, you got to stop dealing with uh, getting the floating ship to Marrakesh. Get, get on the lightning ship, Brent, and get there as quickly as possible. Which he does. And he goes as quickly as possible with his little page, Tristan. Boom, they zoom over there. Um, Xander and then use, uh, again, uses the door thing uh, from the Magister to go get Xander's mom, Zatanna, Super Mage. Hey, hey come in here to this. Um, I need you to help protect the city from this assault that's going to happen on it as the Marquis is attacking Zul the dragon on Avalon because Avalon's off the coast of Marrakesh and the castle's actually the closest part of Marrakesh. So he says, Mom, come on. And Mom does, goes back, uh, and then they go from there to the castle of Marrakesh and which Xander knows everybody there and they know Xander and he's like and Zatanna and they like Xander says um, to Andrew's wife and family, um, which is Nomura, his wife, and the kids, get inside the um, Tower of the Magister with Crow and hide from this. Well, meanwhile, I'm going to boost Mom with magic, and I'm going to try to, and, and she's going to try to dispel whatever's going to happen. Well, as we soon find out, uh, Marquis. Christopher, using the dragon power and also his power, finds Zul's cave, wakes up Zul, the sleeping Zul, um, blue dragon, underwater sea dragon sort of thing, and starts going into him, just tearing him up um, and using his vision too, uh, or his breath. His dragon breath is a mix of his vision and dragon breath. Basically, since he can see through anything, it it's burrowing a hole through anything. And it goes right through Zul. Um, he also then teleports behind Zul and goes right through through Zul's throat, neck, you know, because dragons have this long neck thing. Blasts it through. Killing blow. Destroying everything. And just as um, the dragon tattoo had told uh, Christopher Prentice, you're probably going to die doing this. In which happens the death of this marquis. So in two, in one day, two marquis have died, and now it passes on the mantle of marquis to um, sister Chloe, the next in line to the throne. Um, and which is sad, nonetheless. And uh, Madeline, meanwhile, back in Avatalos, realizes that her son has died and lets everybody know, sadly. And um, meanwhile, the, this big tidal wave, you know, part of um, Avalon, north end of it, blows up like a nuke going off. This tidal wave goes out, destroying shipping, and is heading towards Marrakesh. It's about 14 miles to Marrakesh. This wave just comes... Uh, Andrew is, is arriving close by and he's starting to try to control the, the water that's coming into the city. 
most of the devastation is part of the dragon force or power, if you will, that's um, is, is doing that initial wave. Um, collateral damage is something that everybody can stop or try to control. And, and because of Zatanna, and then Floki flies his ship in front of the city and, and tries to blast at it with, um, you know, uh, the energy uh, of magic that he can pull from being a lightning mage and blasting. Oh gosh, I gotta go. Well, and so they, the, the city gets attacked. Um, Andrew um, saves a lot of people. Uh, and and the blast that Zatanna, Zatanna takes a hit. Um, actually, Xander gets blown back inside the Tower of Magister. And um, Sean, the ship, gets, you know, busted all up. And, but the majority of Marrakesh is saved. The suburb center section takes some collateral damage, which minute being minimized by Andrew. So, hey, I see you next week. Um, Excelsior, Stanley would say, bye.